This is my house, and I want to build it out of Lego. The plan is to build a perfectly accurate scale replica, inside and out, down to the smallest of details. But first I should clarify, I've since moved out and no longer live here, so don't worry, I've just been working on this ever since. Anyway, let me show you around. The front door led into a small hallway, with a downstairs toilet that was only ever used to store Lego. This was the lounge, with the fireplace that wasn't really a fireplace, and I don't know quite why I'm showing you the understairs cupboard, but it seemed very important at the time. The dining room scarcely fit a dining table, let alone the tumble dryer and two bookshelves we also crammed in there, and the kitchen was beige, bobbly and barely big enough to bake. Here's some footage of me prodding it. So step one was to mark out the floor plan. I found these door frames really useful in determining scale, since they're a set size and cannot be changed, meaning everything has to fit around them. That shot made it look really easy, but this was hours of trial and error. With the size locked in, I built a custom base instead of using an overly large base plate, and replaced the dots with doors and bricks. Then I built the stairs and section of wall they're attached to. Now as I've repeatedly mentioned, this house was very beige, so I've allowed myself some creative license with the floor colours. I made the hallway, are you ready for this? Grey. Yep, way to add some colour, but the stairs I made very colourful with the rainbow pattern. I used light brown planks in the lounge, yellow and light yellow checkers in the dining room, and traditional black and white checkers for the kitchen. I opted for mostly smooth tiles, but included some studs to attach objects to. After then building the walls up a few more layers, it was time to build some furniture. We had these two identical blue sofas, which I did my best to recreate in the scale, and whilst they only really fit one minifigure each, they'll do. Next I built the TV and stand, the fireplace, and this little table, plus a tall potted plant and this smaller flower. The lounge was always being overtaken by all manner of crazy projects. Lego trains, Rube Goldberg machines, roller coasters, cat castles, a giant cat piano, and many, many more. But unfortunately, I only have room to recreate one. I chose the Lego Train Jungle Dome, and built it using these train track tiles, various plant pieces, and a clear dome. That is so weird. This is like actually my lounge. I then built a shoe rack for the hallway. Then in the dining room, I built the table, tumble dryer, tall thin bookshelf, and this smaller wider bookshelf, which I had to sort of build into the wall. My favourite video filmed in here was undoubtedly the breakfast train, so I made a tiny version. For the kitchen, I built the washing machine, sink, oven, and cupboards, then spent a lot of time designing this clunky fridge, which was usually filled with pizza. After then building the walls the rest of the way, I added some extra details, such as a cooker hood, a mirror above the fireplace, and yes, this is an official Lego piece, and these two things, which are supposed to be the Lego portraits I made of myself and Danielle, although they're, let's call it minimalistic. Finally, I added a railing and bush out front, and a small roof over this jutting out section. So the downstairs is finished, and I quickly want to show you two things. This sliding door, which actually works, and the downstairs toilet. You see, if I load it with these tiny Lego Lego sets, then I can recreate this shot. Well, that was underwhelming. Now, before we head upstairs, I have something really special I want to share with you. This is Sierra Leone, a country in West Africa with a population of just below 9 million people. However, 3 million don't have access to basic clean water, and 6.5 million to safe sanitation. The water they drink is often dirty, polluted, and incredibly dangerous. But you and me personally have the power to change that. So I'm fundraising with Charity Water. As little as £1 can provide approximately 1,320 litres of clean water, and £8,000 will see long-term sustainable clean water for an entire community. The money we raise specifically will be used in the Kenema and Moyamba districts to build new wells in communities without one, and deepen existing wells in those that already have one, providing reliable year-round access to clean water. If you donate or fundraise £50 or dollars, I'll shout you out in an upcoming video, and if you donate or fundraise £250 or dollars, I'll send you a personalised video message to say thank you. I'm going to be donating every penny YouTube pays me from this video, and I'm so excited to see the difference we can make together, so let's do something amazing. Ok, back to the house tour. Heading upstairs, the first room on the left was Danielle's office, although never actually in any videos. Then after that, my office where I worked and edited every day. The next room was my bathroom, pretty standard and ordinary. And then the bedroom, with a built-in wardrobe, which again it's very important I show you, and Danielle's small ensuite. Building the layout was much easier this time, since the gap for the stairs took away most of the guesswork. That said, somehow Danielle's bathroom ended up significantly bigger than mine, despite being half the size. Once again I tiled the floors and built the walls up a few bricks, before starting with the furniture. Like I said, Danielle's room was never in any videos, so rather than building a boring office, I thought I'd use it to store some of the projects that couldn't fit downstairs, including Boxingham Palace, which I must say I've done a wonderful job Legoifying, 
and three of the buildings in the city Bella destroyed. Looking back, I really love that video. For my office, I built a desk with my green cutting mat, some coins and banknotes. I'm obviously filming one of my older videos. A keyboard and guitar stand, filming lights, and the bookcase from Cats in Squares. Except Lego Cats didn't fit, so instead it's going to be frogs in squares. I topped it with some clutter, and unlike Danielle's room, mine was exceptionally accurate, and it was really cool to see it in this form. My bathroom was just what you'd expect, and the bedroom only really had a bed and two bedside tables. Still, I managed to include a ton of easter eggs. Bella sitting on my pillow, despite giving her a whole room of pillows. Bella as a loaf of bread, a gag I must have made a million times. The red telephone from the cat puns video. Hello? It's for you, Bella. It's a cat called. <laughs> and the start of the marble run from the cat feeding contraption. Lastly, Danielle's bathroom, which again is pretty ordinary. With the house now furnished, I built up the walls for the final time, until it started to taper inwards for the roof. Here I added the attic, and used it as an opportunity to store some more junk, most notably Reggie's bridge. Okay, maybe that's not junk, but the rest of it is. From here, I attached a roof using hinges, meaning all that was left was to build the catio. Now, I wasn't really sure how to recreate this, and what I've done isn't crazy accurate, but there's the climbing wall, the circular platform, and the high-up platform. Plus, of course, Ralph himself, albeit decidedly less fluffy. Stack the two floors, and there we have it, an accurate scale replica of my house. Whilst I don't miss living here, I certainly miss the time. It will undoubtedly go down as two of the best years of my life, and this feels like a truly fitting souvenir. I just want to end by saying Merry Christmas, and please consider donating to Charity Water. It would mean the world.